And he's saying, let's not fool ourselves here, right? And be dishonest and assume that we have objective truth. We don't. It's not possible. So really all we have is pragmatic truth, right? Positivism. Yet, how often do we hear the rationalist, scientistic arguing and behaving and operating as if they have objective reason, logic, and metaphysical truths as they consistently deny and denounce metaphysical truths. And this is, of course, the great apologetic point that we're making here. But the problem, as we see from that evolutionary position of man, is that there's no reason to believe that there's some inherent value to consciousness or mind. And as many of the present-day Darwinists are now discovering there's no argument for consciousness or mind on their on their presuppositions if you confine everything to materialism that there's obviously no place for a mind because it's by definition not material or the soul or the self right the self is not at what point can you tell me which collection of molecules is the self right well you can't obviously and that none of them can and they all admit that uh, and so since you can't then the self is illusory because the self is really just an arbitrary collection grouping, a grouping of this group of molecules. Well, uh, no, I see perhaps under this microscope many chunks of gray matter, but you have not shown me that that equals a self. Exactly. We, we really need a person, uh, the conception of a person, a soul, right? In order to make sense of this idea of uh, a morally responsible agent operating with a will. And, and, and we always hear from the uh, libertarian perspective, the, the anarcho perspective of responsibility, moral responsibility, ethics, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this all assumes individually acting agents. But again, if the universe is one giant machine of determined materialistic process, then the arising of consciousness in evolutionary process is also just another aspect of the determined machine. And so your belief in free will is really just illusory. It's a phantasm, just like the angels and the demons and God, <laughs> right? According to your view. So this again, redu reduces to a reductio, right? Redu reduces to absurdity. How is it that we can claim to have access or knowledge of objective metaphysical principles and logic that are not in flux? This is another problem uh, and this was ultimate. This was a problem for Plato as well, because Plato had a dialectical view of the body and the soul. The soul uh, existing or subsisting, perhaps, with its connection to the abstract, unchanging, eternal verities of the forms, yet at the same time being imprisoned in the body, subject to perpetual flux. So you have a dialectical tension between two realms: one realm of perpetual flux, another realm of stasis and permanence and unchangeability and the problem of course is that never the twain shall meet and this is a dialectical tension in the history of all western philosophy we reject all dialectics but of course all modern philosophies especially in the west are built on dialectics be it libertarianism be it anarchism be it marxism they are all classed and start from the presupposition of dialectics. This goes back to Plato, goes back to Aristotle, to Plotinus, who all argued that the starting point of philosophy is that, or excuse me, multiplicity or, or distinction implies tension or opposition. And this is why we have so many problems in society, uh, in man's own life and so forth and so on because we believe that the fall is what brought about dialectical tensions as a result of the movement of the will okay it's not a metaphysical problem of differences or distinctions that are man's problem but the movement of the will away from the good that is man's problem so two different views there whereas uh, we, so we locate man's problem as ethical in a matter of the heart the Greeks and the rest of the tradition of the West locates man's problem in the externals of metaphysics, politics, and then ultimately with Marx and so forth, class, gender, right, identity politics, right? So all of man's problems are located in the external sphere, right? This is where we get behaviorism, the perfecting of man through external stimuli. No, 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 no. Man's problems begin 
uh, as Paul and the book of James say, internal with the desires and lusts of passions of the heart, right? The corruption that result from the fall and man uh, no longer having control of his passions. And so man needs a renovation of his heart. And this is why we believe that Christian theology preaches this repentance, this, uh, this change of heart, which is a lifetime thing. Right, a continual process through life uh, of moving away from rebellion, dialectical tensions, right, and towards God. So dialectics and dialectical tensions actually is a manifestation of blaming God for man's own moral vices and fall. When we say that man's problem is the fact that there's these differences out there in the world, and there's these there's your nation over there and your race and your gender over there. And then I've got mine over here. And the problem that we all have is that we're different. And if we can just battle and smash and war against each other until we all have one giant smorgasbord melting pot or something, then we'll finally have peace when we destroy all the differences. Actually, in, in our theology, we believe in a balance between the one and the many. In God, there is a perfect ultimacy between the one and the many. There's no divergence or imbalance. There's no primacy to unity in God over against the triad of God. It's not like the Father has more being or the oneness of God has more being over against the Son and the Spirit. The Son is just as much God as the Father, we say. And so our view is that the doctrine of the Trinity is the source, foundation, and basis for our belief that there is harmony both with unity and with multiplicity. The one and the many are never out of balance and they're not in tension. So there's no dialectical tensions and oppositions. Uh, this has been argued many times by many, many Orthodox theologians for many centuries. So it goes back to Maximus, Maximus the Confessor arguing dialectics with Pyrrhus, the monothelite. All of this plays out in our worldviews, whether we know it or not, is really the point here with um, the transcendental arguments that I'm presenting here will convey. That's at least my goal. Yes, we want to hold the left uh, to their own presuppositions, hold them to, they're accountable to their own claims and statements. If they're going to be consistent, we want them to go the full way. We want them to ultimately say, as Wittgenstein will say, words are meaningless games and constructs. And guess what? Once you've said words are meaningless games and constructs, you have completely destroyed your own position. You can no longer argue and debate. And so actually you've contradicted yourself at the most fundamental level.